free foot race. I tell you, you had my place. Now, come on, get out of there. Get out of there. What are you doing? Hey, what's the matter with you? Oh, oh, shut up. That's my place. What are you doing? Ride the bicycle? <laughs> he tell you always come up. Leave the and you man of your own beat me. I'll win this race if I have to beat every one of you. Yeah, he tell you always come up first all the time. Uh, what's the delay? You know, I get awfully nervous. What delays him, you know? I, uh, you know, I could win this race. I could win this race. On your mark. Get set. <laughs> Well, they're running all in a bunch, like bananas. Number six in the lead, so all you folks with ticket stubs ending in six, watch the guy in the derby hat. The old chap, number five, battles it out with the fat boy, number three. But, oh, why does number six wear that hat? Maybe he has a swelled head to shut in. Seven and four get a break now and look like real enemies. Six has the hat again, but ten has the speed, it seems. But watch out for upsets, for now number seven is leading. Wish him good luck, and there's a detour here. Over the fence is out, so try not to turn it down. Looks like anybody's race, but number eight, the color lad, gets out of the scramble first, while seven and four are getting more vicious. That fat fellow has plenty of persistence and perspiration. Six and ten are sure some rivals, but there are tricks in all trades, and oh, what a trick. Now, why those suspenders? I guess he's too thin to hold up a belt. Away up in front, it's race against race, the black against the yellow, neck and neck, numbers eight and nine, but look out for seven. Clever people, these Chinese. Number nine grabs the lead, but the black boy gets a swell idea, so does the think with dire results, for Harlem's pride bites the dust, while number one, the lily white Frenchman, and seven, the Italian tornado, join the melee, followed by the others, and after the scrimmage, number six is in a daze. Off he goes the wrong way, but he gets wise and fails the pickaninny. Aha, the top of the hill at last, and number one leading temporarily, for the Flying Dutchman, number four, is a hot contender, with the tough guy, number two, the runner-up. Old Baldy, number three, looks all in now. Too bad. And here's a happy surprise. Snowy, he's off again. And now the Dutch Zebra, number four, leads to Trenchy and the South Monk trailing. But Fatty gains some real impetus downhill. On they dash. Old Dutch still keeps his handlebar mustache out in front. Fatty rolls on merrily, and here's what looks like a hiatus. Anyway, it's a high fence. Something must be done. Fatty's coming. The last one over is a sap. Maybe they all are. Five is the tail end of them. Wow! Baldy crashes through. Still a downhill game. Dixie Sam, number eight, leads, but Fatty breezes past them all. Hooray! Oh, cancel that hooray. Fatty Christ. Well, number six finds that Fatty wants to play bridge. Sambo pulls a bad flop, and number ten tries fancy diving. Now it's uphill with number five still bravely holding last place. The tough guy, number two, makes the grade first and oh, for a little rest. Nice comfy chair, but looks like he's going for a ride. He sure is. Oh, what a shock. The other guys get a big idea and make it unanimous. Nothing like solid comfort in any well-regulated foot race. They're off. Woolly top, number two, the ex-prize fighter proudly leads the way and crashes the guard in a big way while the others prepare for the great chariot race. They jockey around, each seeking an advantageous position. Here's where real sportsmanship is going to count. Every muscle of these sterling athletes is quivering. Number ten gets away first, and seven is left at the post. Madly, they continue their wild dash, and the guard again gets his. Now, it's a breakdown for the leader. Oh, what luck. Troubles never come singly, and this guard realizes that takes plenty. Gee whiz, that chance looks like a menace. It is for the chink. Meanwhile, four and six, a fight for the lead, and the Oriental mystery forges on, while Dixie Sam, the man from Harlem, leads old Baldy who enjoys the breeze and the sea. And now, they're nearing the end of the cross-country dash and will soon enter the city. Looks like trouble, folks. It's a bad curve and pretty dangerous going. Yes, sir, it looks to me like a bad spill. But, oh, folks, uh, it's a perfect day for this great race. The weather's beautiful. Well, something's happened. It looks like a terrible mess from where I stand. Uh, now, now they're back in town again. <laughs>
Ah, well, here we are again, folks. And oh, what speed. Across the tracks and up the opposite hill. Going so fast, they actually coast uphill. Yes, sir, believe it or not, they defy the laws of gravitation. Oh, boy, what a race. But now, it looks like trouble. They're stopping. And down below, danger looms. The train approaches. What shall they do? They're rolling backwards. Oh, what a spot they're in. It's just like a movie. The flagman tries vainly to warn them. But on comes the unexpected train. Folks, it looks like the crash of the century is coming. Yeah, I can't look. Now it's happening. I can't see through the train, but probably every man was sacrificed. Now, what do you know about that? Where are they? Well, well, here they are, safe and sound. Safe by presence of mind. Two and four are leading as they head for the country, and now Dixie Sam leads the way alone with nine, three, and six in hot pursuit. But number one calls on his reserve energy, while the Englishman undergoes a slight loss. And number six hits more hard luck and has to chase that hat again. He gets it. And now, off for the front. It's never too late to win. He joins the gang, but cannot pass them. For now, another hill looms into view right near the finish line. It won't be long now. Someone must win. So cheer for your favorite number. It's anybody's race even now. Yell for your own choice. Now it's seven. But number one gains on him, and ten comes up rapidly. Now, it's number three. And again, the chink forges ahead. Almost the home stretch. Seven leads. But here's number two. And now number one. Stumble. Two leads. But here's number six who freezes by gloriously. He doesn't stay in front very long. Maybe his mind is still on that hat. Seven forges to the front now, but loses out to number four. Nine and eight still carry on their private fight with the chink again victorious. Up front, number six is passed by number three. He loses out to number ten, and at last, number five gets in front. Not for long, for nine jumps in, and now it's number four. It's almost over. Three is now leading the four. Number six, the winner. Yeah.